I am a candidate for City Council District B. Just quickly about me, I am 57 years old. I live not very far from here over on Pendleton Street. My mom lives right around the corner on the old street. I was born in New Orleans. I was raised in New Orleans. I was educated in public schools and here in New Orleans at McMahon and Dillon. And I'm holistically committed to making sure that not only District B, but all of New Orleans thrives and, and, pro and prospers. I have two sons. I have one and about two-thirds grandchild. My wife and I started dating when she was 12 and I was 13. We met at our church, which is also here in District B. I'm currently the director of the Drons YMCA School of Commerce, also in District B over at uh, Jackson and uh, O.C. Haley. And I will be happy to answer any questions that I don't answer during this process. I'll be happy to meet with anybody afterwards to make sure that uh, I've covered all of your concerns. J.H. Banks, thank you. I saw some people requesting that we stand up. A little cumbersome, but. So my name's Catherine Love, and my goal is to be your next councilwoman. I'm running on a platform of service, plain and simple. Uh, my only ambition is to advocate for you as the citizens of New Orleans. I believe in government that upholds the highest ethical standards. I believe in 100% transparency and 100% accountability. It is not enough just to give lip service to the issues that plague us. Uh, we really need to clearly define the problems and address them. We need to involve all stakeholders in devising solutions. And we need to establish measurable outcomes so that we can evaluate how these changes improve the lives of New Orleans. We've suffered long enough under political showboating and power play. It is time for real leadership, real solutions, and a real commitment to its people. So I'm asking you to let me advocate for you, Catherine Love, number 67, on your ballot. Good evening, Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Eugene Bennett. Uh, thank you all for coming today and uh, inviting us to pick, speak with you about the issues that most concern this city at this time. I am originally from New York. I've been in the city for 12 years. I came here with a backpack and the shoes on my feet. Right as Katrina happened, I was sent here from the New York City Housing Authority to do infrastructure and development for the city of New Orleans. I'm trained as an architect and as an, as an environmentalist. Um, I, I am, I've been married for 20 years, but I have four kids and two grandchildren, and my wife is from New Orleans. Um, the issues that continue to permeate the city as part of what we've seen with the issue with the flood management system that was not properly well managed and organized by the city with no strategic plans. And this is part of the issue that we have to begin to look at as we begin to talk to you today and to answer the concerns and questions that you have. Thank you so much. Hello, thank you all for coming out. I'm Dr. Andre Strumer. I'm running under Action Andre, number 69 for our district. I've been here a little over 12 years. Got to the Irish Channel June 27, 2005, 63 days before the storms, just in time to see everything fall apart. Out of sheer tenacity and stubbornness, I stayed, stuck with it, and I can't imagine living anywhere else. I was living in New York on September 11th. I was living down here through Katrina. People say that you're unlucky. Nah, I'm incredibly lucky, super lucky, golden horseshoe lucky. Because I have all my people got sight and sound and life and limb, and we're moving forward. I've turned uh, my block in the Irish Channel as captain of it into a place where it's a community, not just neighbors, where everyone on the street knows everyone else at least by first name. We're gonna be moving forward, and that's why I wanna devote more of my time to the greater New Orleans area in District B. Thank you very much for showing up tonight. It's really important for the community building. Thank you so much to all the neighborhood associations for putting this together. My name is Seth Bloom. I'm running for City Council District B. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'm a criminal defense lawyer and I've done some general civil litigation uh, for the last 13 and a half years here in New Orleans. I'm a graduate of Loyola Law School. I guess the thrust of my platform is criminal justice reform, which I think ties into public safety, infrastructure improvements, and I used to talk about potholes a lot, but now with the recent issues with sewage and water board and how important pumping is after we've seen what's happened in Texas and in Florida the last few weeks, uh, that's taken a uh, more prominent role in what I'm talking about. In addition to that, it's economic development. 
Um, I'm a firm believer that if we seal up our public safety issue problem and we improve our infrastructure, then economic development will come on its own. So I really appreciate everyone for having me out tonight and I look forward to sharing my issues and views with everyone. Thank you very much. And good evening, my name is Timothy David Ray. Thank you all for having us here tonight. Happy to be here and share with you. Uh, my name is Timothy David Ray, member 68 on the ballot running for city council as it should be. Uh, I'll tell you more about my platform in short during your questions, but just about my background. I'm born and raised here in New Orleans. My dad is a retired police officer who worked with NOPD for over 30 years. My mom was a community organizer, but she spent most of her time managing our city's former GED program, helping high school students or high school dropouts earn a GED and finish their uh, high school education. Um, growing up here, I went to schools at uh, Clifton Gaines for middle school and McMain for high school. I have a music degree from Guild University and I'm going to be from Loyola. Um, as I said, I was born and raised here in New Orleans, but I've also spent a lot of time abroad and in other cities, other countries, and I still teach. I teach now at UNO. I'm a, I'm a professor of political science, and I also practice law in the city. I'm looking forward to sharing with you on tonight. Thank you again for having us. Okay, hi everybody. I'm Stephanie Grace. I'm with the Norman's Advocate, and happy to be here. Happy to um, get to see all the candidates in my district too. So. Um, just a reminder that for each of these questions, you have one minute to answer. Our timekeeper is right at the other end. He's going to raise his phone in 15 seconds, and then again in one minute. Um, you're not required to use the whole minute if you don't want to. You can get to more questions. Um, and so we have basically four topic areas we're going to cover tonight. And the first one is public safety. So, and, the, and I think we're going to go left to right here. So start with um, Timothy, and then we'll. Um, shift down. Uh, the first question is about the New Orleans Police Department. Uh, the NOPD currently has 1,157 officers and that includes recruits. Can the city deploy these officers more efficiently or does it need to hire more? And is the current pay scale adequate to attract new officers? Okay, um, so the question was can they employ them more efficiently or hire more, and is the pay scale adequate? Okay. Um, yes, I think they can deploy officers more efficiently. Uh, if, you, if you notice, especially uptown in, in, in District B, I don't know how often you all see active patrols or proactive police. I don't see hardly any of it where I live, I live in Broadmoor. Um, but I will say, just the other night, we had a, a shooting incident, the first uh, in, in my entire lifetime there, and the police responded very quickly to when I called them. But um, I do believe that we could better use the officers we do have. We don't have enough. 1,051 is where we started. I think you said it's 1,057 as of today. We haven't gained that many officers in the first nine months of the year. Um, I do believe that we've had issues with retention. Part of those issues came from uh, recent civil service changes. They come from the pay scale that we, all, that we have for officers. Uh, I do believe um, we should do more to, to fund the police department, but also change how we police using the resources that we do have in a more efficient way. Yeah, I think uh, NOPD is a very important entity in New Orleans. I think right now, and the number I have is 1,078 police officers, but 80% of those at any given time are not on the street. They're, they're sick, they're on vacation, they're behind the desk. So I think we have to allocate resources we have already in place and get more of those police officers out on the street. NOPD is a, NOPD is a hardworking organization with a lot of hardworking men and women, but we have to allocate the force right. And the second part of your question is I do think we need to continue to hire and have additional police, but certainly we have to utilize the ones we have already. I'm very concerned uh, the fact that we don't have strong retention. Our payment, our pay scale for intro uh, police officers isn't that bad. It's the second tier where there's a problem. Uh, I practice law all over the state. I'm, I'm tired of going to St. Tammany Parish or Jefferson Parish and seeing solid police officers that we lost. So we have to improve the morale. I believe we need a reorganization and we need to make New Orleans a safer place. I agree. We could have more police officers. We need close to 500 more to get us to where we were before the storms. There are only two police recruit classes a year that generate a net of 30 officers. 
So that's only 60 a year. We can have outside hires to come in to supplement that. We should be looking at about 150 new recruits first year and then supplement that until we get back to where we were at 1,600 officers. We need to double the amount of patrol officers and have them walking a beat, riding a bike, and driving a cruiser. Hi, Mom. Thank you. Uh, we need to get that. And we need to get that going out. The pay grade is, is good, but these are the people who do these jobs, nurses, firefighters, police officers, these are people who don't do the job for the money. They do it because of the sense of duty, and they love the job. We just need to get more people out there and have a bridge between the community and the police officers, because the community looks at police officers as part of the community, and not so much the police officers as part of the community themselves. Thank you. I think uh, we need to uh, increase our police officers, but basically we, we need to also look at fiscal, fiscal policy and look at uh, a review of tax uh, funding issues in the city, because we have tried uh, doing this through property taxes, which I feel uh, most of the citizens of New Orleans are not happy about. Um, I believe in community policing strategies. I currently work with the Kelly Newton Foundation on workforce redevelopment and prison reentry, and that basically ties into, into the issue of uh, policing in the city. Um, it's an issue that, uh, if I'm elected to the council, we, we need to continue to look for solutions that are permeable with citizens of the city of New Orleans. Thank you so much. So, three-part question, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. So, to change, first of all, to maximize the resources we have, we need to change the policing strategy immediately. We can consolidate precincts and put those officers that are used to man precincts back into the patrol. We can centralize our detective departments and maximize the, the, the resources rather than having them divided throughout different districts. Those are things we can do immediately to put more officers on the um, in patrol cars. The other part of the question regarding pay scale, if you ask the officers, they're not leaving because they're not getting paid enough. They're leaving because of morale issues, and the top two morale issues is allegation-driven leadership, meaning they get put behind a desk as soon as a complaint gets made, and their jacket is extremely important to them. Giving them the option to remove unsubstantiated claims from their record would greatly improve morale. And the second part of that is the increase in unclassified positions gives them an uncertainty in where their options are to be promoted. Yes, we can better deploy the police that are currently working. But the big problem with the police that are currently working is we've got a system now that doesn't actually allow the police to police. We've got a statistics-driven police force. And I've met with two police unions, I've met with rank and file police officers, and the biggest issue is, is that they aren't allowed to actually do their jobs because they've got to meet these statistical quotas which want to make the public think that we're actually having an effect on crime, but all of us know that it's not actually happening. Can more be hired? Sure we can hire more, but the reality of it is we'll never arrest our way out of crime. We could have a thousand more police officers. But until we stop creating criminals, and what I mean by that is until we make these young people understand, give them opportunities to actually do something constructive, we're never going to catch up. I am 100% in support of hiring more police officers. And this question is about pay, it's not about pay. It's about the opportunity to actually do their jobs as professional police, and we need to change that from the top. Thanks to all of you for coming tonight. I'm Robert Morris with Uptown Messenger. I think we've all um, met quite a few times, but um, appreciate you being here. So um, my question is a follow-up to Stephanie's on the police department. Uh, federal oversight of the police department is expected to end during the next city council term. So I'd like to know if you support continuing the provisions of the consent decree. Uh, and I'm refer referring specifically, for example, to regulations on off-duty and overtime assignments. Uh, restrictions on when and why police can stop people and the use of body on cameras, for example. Thanks. Uh, start, start with you, Mr. Blue. Thanks. I'd like to see the consent decree go away, but I don't know that, that we're ready for that at this time without having first probably a reorganization of the police force. 
I'd like to see and hear that morale is improving, that crime is down, that pay is up, uh, and that transparency is really all throughout uh, the police department. Uh, I'm a big fan of body cameras. I think that provides excellent transparency in cases I've handled. It certainly answers a lot of questions about your client as to what was actually happening. Um, I guess your question about different police tactics. Uh, for instance, I know a lot of people don't want stop and frisk, especially in the French Quarter, and I agree with that. That's certainly an invasive, um, unconstitutional policy to some extent. However, there's more creative methods we can use. For instance, you can get dogs that actually smith, that actually sniff out for guns and weapons. Not bombs or drugs, but guns and weapons and ammunition. These could be employed around the French Quarter or other high traffic areas to actually prevent crime. I agree with Steph uh, and the idea that I'd like to see the consent decree go away, but I don't think we've earned that privilege yet. I think we still need a, a outside accountability because we got to the point where our police department was ranked one of the worst in the world. And the people in New Orleans aren't anywhere near the worst in the world. I love this place. But we need a more accountability. And the body cameras is a very good step in that direction. If you don't have anything to hide, then there's no reason to worry about having a body camera recording what you say and do, especially when you're on patrol. Now, as far as police officers taking extra duty, that's a good thing. The more people are out on the street and you can interact with the police officers on a one-on-one -on -one thing, you know, how about them saying, that gives them more interaction with people in the community. And that bridges the gap that has developed between the people of the community and the police. The police want to be police. They don't want to persecute people. They want to protect people. And I want us to get to that place again. Thank you. Consent decree, decree. I think there are issues, serious issues, when that comes to place. And I think this is an issue that basically we have to basically go into the communities and look at what people who are going to put us in office have to see about these issues. Are we improving morale? Uh, that is also a question mark in the monastery. We should not have uh, people who are in the top tier of the police department getting an increase in wages if we feel, as citizens of the community, that crime continues to increase after so many years. Body cameras, as an African American, uh, I agree and concord with everybody around the table. Uh, this, this has been serious issues that basically permeated this. Stop and frisk, I have the same answers to the same issues. We need to study this. Thank you. So there's two aspects to the consent decree. There's the fundamental principle of constitutional policing, which I think you would be hard pressed to find anybody that can say they don't agree with that. However, the burden that comes with the federal oversight is the problem. The administrative burden, the cost burden, and what used to take, let's say, an hour and a half to resolve in a report matter as far as the administrative burden for the police officer now actually takes two hours because of the additional reporting required. So if you think about it, what 1,500 police officers would do with the burden of the consent decree oversight, not the consent decree itself, we need 1,800 officers. So the burden needs to go away. The act of constitutional policing does not need to go away. I do not have a fundamental issue with body cameras, but I would ask everybody, if you had to go to work every day and work under a microscope, how effective would you be at doing your job? Think about if you had your boss hanging over your shoulder at all times. I think it's great for accountability, but I think we also need to consider allowing police officers to do their job. Don't lose sight of why the consent decree was put in place. We had a police department that was in some instances just as bad as the guys that they were supposed to be policing. Right now, the police department, I don't feel, is at the level that we can actually get rid of it. There are certain aspects of it, though, that are probably prohibitive and restrictive that could be tweaked. And I realize that locally we can't do that. But there are components of the consent decree that I fully support. Body cameras, 100%. However, I don't support the fact that it's stopping police officers from supplementing their income by working details. It needs to be continued because I don't think that the police department is where it needs to be yet. 
I would love for this to be Mayberry. I would love for everybody to walk around like Barney Fife and not have these problems. But the reality is we aren't there yet, so I think it needs to stay in place. If you're like me and you've been in New Orleans for all of your life, you remember what our department was like and how brutal it was, how many headlines we had from corruption to you know, PD over the years. And several administrations and several city councils have tried to clean up this force up. And so we entered this consent decree with that purpose in mind. And again, my father was on the force for over 30 years. And uh, the last 10 or 12 of his, of his tenure, he served in internal affairs and public integrity, investigating complaints against officers before we had a uh, police monitor's office. So uh, I, I support the consent decree. I think it's a good thing. I think it's going to help us to clean up our department finally and make sure that we have um, institutional changes that can be made and sustained. With that comes, you know, we did reductions in stopping and frisking people. You know, that, that's unconstitutional, and uh, many jurisdictions have already said that. And with body cameras, I understand officers may not like them, but they are going to become the norm. Right now, we're one of the only parishes that has them, but as soon as, at some point, it will become a standard for practice policing around the country, so I support those as well. 